today we'll be talking about medication any kind of medical substance that we use in the treatment of diseases or cure the diseases or maybe using the prevention is what I mean by saying medication we have some types of medication that are used in preventing disease like vaccine we have others that are used to cure um, diseases like let's say when you are having headache you're taking paracetamol then the headache goes down or you are being relieved so all of these are some of the um, chemical substances that we take in to help in treating our diseases and also mind you medication is also used in diagnosis of diseases as well for example let's say you taking barium meal so that um, you can visualize your intestines on, on the x-ray all of these are some of the medic chemical substances we use in diagnosis of disease and they are medication when 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 we serve drug correctly we can restore life but when uh, we, we, we don't when we don't serve it correctly then we can uh, endanger the patient's life now what are some of the sources of drugs we are talking about here a drug is something we use in treatment prevention cure or uh, even in diagnosis of diseases but where do, do we get we them from so plants is the first one i would like to talk about plants for thousands of years plants have served as a source of drug a penetrin, a drug used to treat nasal congestion so way back drug plants has been the major source of drug and and it, it is the oldest source of drug that um, we know so far example is Bal baladuma tree the source of atropine and scopolamine was used in middle ages its name means beautiful woman in italian a solution obtained by soaking the baladuma plant in water caused people of the eye to dilate and appear black so these were symbols of beauty opium the products obtained from the poppy plants so all these um upward drugs that um, people take in in order to have um, let's say sleep or in order to gain some kind of satisfaction that sometimes people abuse uh, they are derived from opium it's, it's a tree it's a tree they are derived from open so plant has been a source of drug ever since the next source of um, drug is animal animal so we can get um insulin and hormones from animals in the treatment of um, diabetes mellitus so um, animals too sometimes serve as a source of drug but the but mind you sometimes when they take these um, hormones and insulin they work on it or from the lab before they administer it to individuals so animal too is a source of a um, drug the next one i would like to talk about is mineral mineral as a source of drug minerals such as iron and iodine are essential for normal growth and development so an old remedy for parlor was the, the was the water used to cool horses in black mesh shop this water contains more amount of iron in solution so minerals are also a source of um, um, a source of drug we get minerals like um, um, iodine and iron also help in enhancing the individual well-being's life so mineral too is a source of drug when someone is anemic the person may be advised to take in drug containing iron so when the patient the patient taking the drug or and the food containing iron and we see that 
the body will start producing more blood cells and it will help the individual um, to recover so minerals to use a source of plant and um, drug microorganisms microorganisms is a um, is something that people usually think they are they are harm to the individual and, and because of that you should stay away from them by doing regular hand washing and a whole lot of preventive methods but um on the other side microorganisms serve as um, a source of drug microorganisms serve as a source of drug by and uh, using them to feed is to, to to kill other microorganisms you can use some microorganisms to kill other microorganisms so and also we can also use a weak form of a microorganism to to produce vaccines yes we can use a weak form of microorganism to produce vaccines when these microorganisms the weak form of uh, microorganisms are being introduced into your body the body kind of generates and uh, or produce antibody to fight against these weak microorganisms then as the body is trying to do so then it's trying to build um immunity against the kind of disease so that's how vaccine works and the microorganism is a source of um, drug used in prevention of diseases and also we have synthetics the synthetics are um, the chemical and chemically synthesized drugs that um, nowadays we, are, we, we normally take and do synthesis to is a source of medication it's a source of medication root of drug administration the path by which a drug fluid or other substance is taken into the body the path by which a drug fluid or other substance is taken into the body so any part that we can use to administer a drug into someone's body is one person root of drug administration now the name of the roots are determined by the location by which the substance is applied the name of the roots is determined by the location by which the substance is applied so in case you apply a man um, um, you, you inject someone with a drug through the muscles then it bears the name and um, intramuscular when you administer it through the vein then intramuscular so that's what i'm trying to say that um, the name of a root is determined by the location by which the substance is applied the root of drug administration is determined primarily by the property of the drug for example water or lipid solubility and by the therapeutic effect so in order to determine that the root uh, uh, in order for you to choose a kind of root to administer a drug these are some of the things you consider the property of the drug that is one the property of the drug and then the second one is therapeutic objective what do we want to achieve uh -huh. so the therapeutic objectives will also come into play over here let's say we want to someone is in emergency situation and we want to uh, give a drug to the patient in order to revive the patient then it means we should we, 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 we are to go for a drug that will easily get into the um, systemic circulation uh -huh. and and also um, 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 with the property of the drug let's say if the drug you are giving is not water soluble it may affect the parts that you want to administer to uh -huh. so this one is to you need to consider the major route of drug administration include one, entera, two, parenthera, and three, topica, and among others. Now, 
let me have time to explain what we mean by saying entera and parentera. When we say entera, the uh, the root of drug administration, or when we say entera, we are talking about administering drug through the gastrointestinal tract. Administering drug through the gastrointestinal tract, and also when you administer these kind of drugs into the through the gastrointestinal tract it gets into the circulation the systemic circulation and also the parenteral are the roots that uh, 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 parenteral is giving a drug to reach the systemic circulation by not through the git administering a drug to reach the systemic circulation but not through the git and then the entera is giving a drug to add to reach the systemic circulation but through the gastrointestinal tract and we have other other ones that is the topical and others we will get to know when with the next slides okay. now classification of root of drug administration root of drug administration has been divided into two we have systemic and then local when we say systemic it means that when this when you use these roots the drug is going to um, get into the systemic circulation for you to have its effect the drug will have to reach the systemic circulation for it for 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 it to start working. Uh -huh. Then, so under the system, we have entera and parentera. Then, another um, um, entera, as I said, they are through the GIT. They are through the GIT. We, we give them through the gastrointestinal tract. Oh. And then the parentera is giving a drug to reach the uh, is a route whereby when you serve a drug it will get into the systemic circulation but not through the GIT. Uh -huh. We have example of entera. We have oral sublingual rectal, oral sublingual then rectal. And also we have under the parenteral we have inhalational injections, transdermal, intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intraarterial, intraarticular, and intratica, intraderma. So for the parenteral rate, we have inhalational then injections so under the injection we have all these and uh, roots under the injection we have intravenous intramuscular subcutaneous intratica and intraarticular intratica and intraderma then we move on to the loca loca meaning that the drug is going is going to work at that particular place you, you are uh, that is being administered so for example let's say you apply a triple action on your skin as a result of rashes and this cream is going to work on the rashes that is loca uh -huh. loca so example of roots under the loca is the skin which is topical in intranasal through the nose ocular drop and mucosa throat that is um, an vagina mouth as a ear sorry mucosa truth vagina mouth ear you have inhalation then transderm so basically this is a classification of um root of drug administration 
Entera route. The Entera administration of med uh, medication, as I said, is administering drug by oral, sublingual, and rectal. Basically, the GIT. It is the safest and most common, convenient, and economical method of drug administration. Uh, that is the Entera. So, when you say oral, giving a drug through the mouth, giving a drug through the mouth, as an example of Antera. Let's look at some of the advantages of the oral route of drug administration. We have safe, it is very safe, have a lower risk of systemic infection that could complicate treatment. It has what? A lower risk of systemic infection that could complicate treatment when a drug is given through the mouth as it gets to the stomach because of the acidic acidic nature of the stomach in case there is there are a sort of um, um or the drug in some way is contaminated this acidic nature can can kill these uh, microorganisms then the patients may not suffer from that kind of contamination so there is it, it have a lower risk of systemic infection either than the parenteria toxicities and overload by oral routes may be overcome with antidotes yes so when in case there was an um, overdose or toxicity as a result of a drug taken orally it can easily overcome by serving an antidote then convenient and self-administered so it's very convenient and it's pain free non-invasive it's not like the parenteral whereby you give it to sorry you, you give it using injection here and there now easy to administer it's very easy to administer it's economical compared to other parenteral rates usually good absorption take place along with the whole length of the GIG drug. There is no need for sterilization. Uh, there is no need for sterilization. Okay, that one too is an important advantage of uh, oral route of drug administration. But let's look at that, some of the disadvantages. There is slow absorption. A slow action cannot be used in emergency. So since uh, 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 after you taking a drug through the mouth, you will have to pass through the stomach, get into the small intestine. They are being absorbed by the small intestine. Then it goes to the it goes to the liver before it reaches the, the systemic circulation. Now look at this um, journey. It's very long, but because of that, you can give this kind of drug in in emergency situations you can give it in emergency situation the patient might die uh -huh. it's irritable and um sorry it irritable and unpalatable drugs can usually lead or usually leads to nausea and vomiting and it's it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disadvantage of uh, of drug administration cannot be used uncooperative though when a patient is going for surgery, you can't serve a drug that, uh, or you can't serve a drug orally. Yes, and it's, it becomes a disadvantage. Vomiting an unconscious patient, you cannot take oral drug, oral roots, or cannot take a drug orally since they may vomit it out. And unconscious patients may be choked if you try to administer a drug to them sometimes ineffective drug absorbed yes some drugs are being destroyed by the enzyme the hydrochloric acid in the stomach and here and there and it affects its efficiency so some drugs cannot be said orally like streptomycin first pass effect due to biotransformation first pass effect due to biotransformation um when you're taking a drug as i said earlier on it will have to pass through the stomach 
to the small intestine and being absorbed, then you have to pass to uh, or go to the um, the liver through the portal vein. So as it reaches the liver, there's going to be some kind of detoxification and a whole lot of processes. And by so doing, it will bring the effectiveness of the drug down to bring it down. So first pass effect due to biotransformation and also is 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 because of it it becomes a, 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 a disadvantage since we are not going to get all the um, required efficacy we are not going to get the efficacy now food drug interaction food drug interaction and some food can interact uh, 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 and when you take some food you can't take a drug or you can't take a drug in combination with some food and drug drug interaction some drugs can interact with others when you take them orally um, so you can't take this advantage the low ph of the stomach may inactivate some drugs that one to is the last point of add disadvantages of taking drug orally Sublingual or buccal roots. The drug is placed under the tongue or crush in mouth and spread over the buccal mucosa to allow it to diffuse into the capillary network and therefore enter the systemic circulation directly. Example is sublingual nephridipine. Sublingual nephridipine. So this one, uh, and you place the drug under the tongue or you crush it in the mouth and you spread it over the buccal mucosa to allow it to diffuse into the capillary network yes. so that is how the uh, um, um, sublingual root or buccal root looks like or oh, that's what I mean by saying sublingual or buccal root example of a drug that we can take uh, we can take it under the tongue is a um, um, sublingual nephridipine sublingual nephridipine using the treatment of hypertension advantages advantages is rapid absorption as it doesn't um, pass through the stomach to the the liver and whole other processes this one it gets straight into the blood through and the capillaries in the buccal cavity quick termination it, 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 it affects it's quick on the system since it's rich the system is circulation in a fast manner it's economical convenience of administration there's low incidence of infection and bypass of the harsh gastrointestinal environment as I explained earlier on and avoidance of first pass metabolism yes. so these are the advantages of sublingual root of drug administration disadvantages unpalatable and bitter drugs may cause nauseation and vomiting so becomes a disadvantage irritation of oral mucosa too can happen and uh, large quantities are given few drugs are absorbed only few drugs are absorbed in the mouth or under the tongue the last route i will, will talk about under the entera is the um, erectile route the rectal root drug that are administered rectally as a suppository so drugs that are administered rectally as a suppository in this form a drug is mixed with a waxy substance that dissolves or liquefies after it is inserted into the rectum example is diazepam indomethacin Paraldehyde and then a good time. 
all these drugs can be administered rectally so you can give it to the rectum and these drugs are, are being mixed with waxy substances so immediately you and you push it into the rectum and it will start melting so that uh, the vessels can um, take the drug into the systemic circulation part the body starts using it so that is the rectal risk let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages advantages use in children it is easily used in children so there is little or no first pass effect and there is, there is use in vomiting or unconscious patients and so when you are, having a, you are nursing a patient who is unconscious you can serve a drug through the rectum higher concentration rapidly achieve yes since there is low or no first pass effect all the, the the concentration level is going to increase uh -huh. the concentration level of your drug is going to increase disadvantages it is inconvenient it's inconvenient absorption is slow and erratic irritation or inflammation of rectal mucosa can okay yes that one to these are some of the disadvantages of rectal rectal drug administration now parenteral root parenteral root the parenteral root introduces drug directly across the body's barrier differences into the systemic circulation so parenteral administration is used for drugs that are poorly absorbed from the GIT and for agents that are unstable in the gastrointestinal tract. Example of parenteral roots of drug administration are intravenous roots, intramuscular roots and subcutaneous roots. So a drug these drugs will be administered into the um, 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 um the systemic circulation without not, not passing the barriers or uh, the, the body's barrier defenses so you just dodge all these defenses and then push the drug into the systemic circulation directly uh -huh. that's what we by saying parenteral roots now categories of parenteral roots we have intradermal as a drug introduction of drug into the skin intradermal derma into the skin intravascular administration of drug into the bloodstream it can be through the veins or artery we have intravenous and um, that is giving a drug through the vein uh, administering a drug through the vein we have intramuscular intramuscular there is introduction of drug into the muscles so drug administered in intramuscularly can be in aqueous solution which are absorbed rapidly or in specialized depot preparation which are absorbed slowly. So these are some of the examples of um, parenteral rate of drug administration. We have subcutaneous as another example. So the drug is administered beneath the skin into the subcutaneous tissues where absorption takes place rapidly. Uh -huh. So that is subcutaneous uh, root of drug administration. We have intratica or intraventricular. There is introduction of drug directly into the cerebrospinal fluid. For example, intratica amphotericin B is used in treating um, cryptococcal meningitis so basically these are um, some of the example of um, the entera and the parenteral root of drug administration so 
wrapping up i said well today we learned that we learned that medication is a chemical substance used in the treatment cure prevention and diagnosis of diseases then we move on to say that um these medications are being derived from some places or some kind of um, things so these things that we get the draft from our own by saying source of draft one is plants plants as you can one is animals we get insulin and hormones from animals we have minerals such as iodine and then iron microorganisms microorganisms to serve as a, as a as a source of drug by by using them to fight other microorganisms or using them to boost our immunity uh -huh. then we have synthetic as a source of drug then coming to the root of drug administration we said that they are the pathway by which a drug fluid or other substance is taken into the body the name of the roots are determined by the location by which the substances apply so that is the root of drug administration for you then we we, we move on to the classification we said that under the classification we have systemic and local then for the systemic it means that the drug is administered the uh, for the purpose of reaching the systemic circulation but we have some that we that pass through the mouth and we call them entera and others that don't pass through so we have some that pass through the gastrointestinal tract and we call them entera and others that do not pass through the gastrointestinal we call it we call them parenteral then under the parenteral we have inhalation injection transdema under the injection we have intravenous intramuscular subcutaneous intraarterial intraarticular intratica intradema then under the anterior we have oral sublingual and rectal with the local then the other side of the classification is local whereby we intend to apply the drug to a specific place in order to achieve the effects at that particular place or we intend to get um, the effect of the drug at a particular place so that's what we're saying local we have skin that is topical intranasal intraocular and mucosa vagina mouth ear inhalational transdermal all of these are local modes of drug administration so thank you very much bye bye